So just a few days into March, Apple has released via press release in their newsroom the new M3 MacBook Air in both a 13-inch and 15-inch size. And again, if you are an M2 MacBook Air user, then I think this is one that you should skip, but I do want to give you guys three reasons why or three things that you should really know about when it comes to this new M3 MacBook Air because there are some things that could be noteworthy and maybe enough to warrant an upgrade from the M2 to the M3. Let's get into it. So as I stated in the very beginning of this video, unless you're looking to go from the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air to the 15-inch MacBook Air and then get the M3 chip, there really isn't a reason for you to upgrade, and you can see that there's a telltale sign of this, because in Apple's newsroom or their press release about the M3 MacBook Air, they compared all the specs and statistics internally in terms of speed and performance, they compared it mostly to the M1 MacBook Air and then also to the Intel-based MacBook Air. They kept the M2 MacBook Air completely away from it, and even when you press the compare button on Apple's website, it defaults to comparing the M2 MacBook Air in the 13-inch variant to the 15-inch variant M3 MacBook Air. So that goes to show you that if you already have a 13-inch M2 MacBook Air and you just want the M3 13 inch MacBook Air, there really isn't much of a reason. But at the end of the day, it is your decision and you might know exactly who you are if you do want to upgrade from M2 to M3. But the first big difference that we notice from the M2 to the M3 is that with the M2 chip and even the M1 chip, unless you got the M2 Pro, M2 Max, or M2 Ultra, you can actually only extend your laptop over to one extended monitor. So now with the M3 MacBook Air, by default, it does allow you to extend it to two monitors, but it does come with a caveat in typical Apple fashion. It will only work with two extended monitors if you you're using your laptop in clamshell mode, which means that you're going to have to have an external keyboard and an external mouse or trackpad or both in order to actually control it. So that's to each their own. At least Apple's letting us extend to two full-size monitors because as you can see behind me, yes, right now I have my iPad connected to my external monitor, but whenever I use my MacBook Air, the M2 one that I have, I'm only able to extend to one monitor. So what I like to do to have kind of a dual monitor setup is keep my Apple laptop open on the left-hand side of my actual monitor. And that way I can kind of feel like I have two extended monitors. But as of right now, if you do want to extend to two monitors with the M3 MacBook Air, you got to use it in clamshell mode. Let's see if Apple gives us a software update to kind of go around that. But for now, that is the only way to do it. So the second thing that you should know about this new upgrade is, of course, the M3 chip going inside of the MacBook Air. And the reason this is a big deal is because it does give you better GPU performance overall. And Apple has kind of touted that. And it does kind of bring us over to 2024 standards. Because with that M3 chip comes all the improvements to the GPU that they were touting, like being able to play AAA games with the ray tracing. And it also brings an AV1 decode engine, which, again, just allows you to kind of perform better and perform better under pressure or under high loads with that M3 chip. So again, for most people, unless you're planning on gaming on your MacBook Air or planning on developing games, games that have some ray tracing capabilities in it, it's going to be tough for that other person to maybe find a real big use case for the M3 chip, but again, it's there and it does kind of also trickle down into everyday tasks from a GPU performance standpoint. And Apple kept comparing it to the M1 chip MacBook Air, saying that you got a 60% boost in GPU performance and a 60% boost in CPU performance. So all in all, if you are coming from the M1 MacBook Air, there could be a good reason to upgrade, even though I still love the M1 MacBook Air, which sadly they discontinued. But we'll talk about the lineup in just a second, both from a hardware visual standpoint, because it will look different and will feel different, but then also from an internal hardware spec standpoint, it's going to be a much better performing laptop. And then alongside that new M3 chip, you also get Wi-Fi 6E, which gives you 2x faster Wi-Fi speeds. And not only does it give you 2x faster Wi-Fi speeds, but it increases the distance that you're able to connect to a Wi-Fi 6E router if you do have a Wi-Fi 6E capable router. So that, at the end of the day, is something that is welcome in 2024. They did add a new 3 mic array to, again, just improve sound quality overall in terms of being able to speak into the actual laptop itself. And that gives us a nice little segue into the third thing that you should know about this M3 MacBook Air. So in Apple's newsroom or the press release about the M3 MacBook Air, they added a whole section about AI and how the M3 MacBook Air is the most well-equipped laptop to be using AI with. And they went on to kind of talk about all the different applications. They didn't talk about any actual Mac OS specific ways to use this AI or this machine learning or this language model. They mostly kind of started talking about other AI capable applications built into Mac OS. But I do think what this does is it's going to open up the door big time during WWDC. And I think Apple's kind of foreshadowing what the use cases are going to be for the M3 chip from an AI, from a machine learning, and from a language model standpoint in terms of how we're going to be able to use Siri on the actual computer itself. Because again, Apple's big on on-device comprehension and on-device machine learning. And then on-device language models, they don't want to kind of send things into the internet because of privacy reasons and things like that. So I do think Apple's going to put a best foot forward from a generative AI standpoint, and the M3 chip is going to help get them there. But for right now, again, I'm a big believer in don't buy something for the promise that it's going to do tomorrow, buy it for what it is today. And as of right now, it's just a little bit faster of a version of the M2 MacBook Air. They're just throwing the M3 chip in there and giving you what you can get right now with that M3 chip. But outside of those three reasons or those three things that you should know about this M3 MacBook Air, 
At the end of the day, it's going to be identical from a form factor standpoint and for the most part from a usability standpoint compared to the M2 MacBook Air. So, so the same exact colorways that we had from before, we have the same exact footprint, the same thickness, the same width, we have the same 13.6 inch display versus the same 15.4 inch display. So at the end of the day, if you are coming from an older one, like the M1 MacBook Air or older, then by all means, it's going to be a great upgrade. But for those people like myself who are using the M2 MacBook Air, I don't really see a reason, especially if you're somebody that spec'd up their current M2 MacBook Air like I did with 16 gigs of RAM. So since Apple got rid of the M1 MacBook Air, it looks like Apple now has their entry-level MacBook Air sitting at $1,000, and that is going to be the M2 MacBook Air. So the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage is now $1,000. And then the new M3 MacBook Air in the 13-inch variant is $1,099, and then the M3 15-inch MacBook Air starts at $1,299. So from a value standpoint, I do believe that the M3 MacBook Air in the 13 inch size is going to be the best from a baseline model because they're all the same across the board. You're just getting a larger display and then two additional GPU cores with the 15 inch variant, but eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage across the board. I do wish Apple went 16 gigs with the minimum RAM and maybe 512 with the minimum storage. But again, we can't really fault Apple for making you want to spend more money. But a quick little tip for you guys, if you guys are in the US, I don't know how this is done overseas, but if you're in the US, scroll all the way bottom to the Apple store where it says shop for college or shop for education, and that'll take off $100 off the base price of any computer on Apple's website. So you can technically get the M2 MacBook Air, the 13 inch variant for $899, and then you can get the M3 variant for $1000, and then you can get the 15 inch M3 variant for $1199. And they don't ask for any proof or any identification. So if you guys wanna save $100 and still get something brand new from Apple, by all means go for it. But that is what the lineup looks like now. Gone is a wedge-shaped MacBook Air, which is something that's been around for a very long time. And now we have this new design language that's gone across the board, and Apple's going to stick with it for the foreseeable future. But that is what we have with the M3 MacBook Air. So again, I will reiterate, if you are using an M2 chip MacBook Air already, it's probably not worth it for you. But I can also see situations where maybe having two extended monitors and having that MacBook Air being capable of doing that is going to be enough of a sell if you get enough trade-in value for the M2 MacBook Air for somebody to upgrade. But that's each own. You know exactly who you are if you are in that situation. But outside of that, let me know in the comment down below what you think about this update. Is it something that you've been wanting? Are you coming from an older MacBook Air? Are you planning on upgrading your MacBook Air? Are you that person that currently has the M2 MacBook Air and is upgrading to the M3? Let me know what the comment comment down below but as of today you can pre-order that m3 macbook air and it'll start shipping on march 8th so it's a pretty quick turnaround so definitely stay subscribed as we get a full review in there but i could probably just review my m2 macbook air and pretend it's the m3 macbook air for all everybody knows but don't worry we will not be doing that but if you guys made it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so i know you made it to the end and definitely stay subscribed like i mentioned because i believe apple's going to be releasing probably one product via a press release per day this week and then hopefully a fully loaded kind of ipad pro revamp next week or maybe at the end of this week so like like I said, stay subscribed. Follow me on Twitter right here if you guys want to stay up to date. But if you guys want to watch more Mac OS, iOS, Vision OS, iPad OS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.